This is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. This is a sham. It's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. (laughs) Happy Wednesday, everybody. Yes. Hi. How's it going? It's going really well. Thanks for asking. All right. Yeah. Are you ready How's to crush this show? You? It's uh, pretty good. Pretty okay, good. good. I'm having some marital issues, but uh, really? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. My wife's great. My wife's. What great. if Jeff just burst into tears? <laughs> I just started the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> and we're I mean, like, like, Anthony and I are coming over. We are going to have an intervention. Yes. <laughs> yes. If it, if you're coming with some beers or liquor. Come on Absolutely. over. We're, we're having huge problems. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, anytime I come over. It's good to go. Yeah. It's good to go. Yeah, yeah. All right. Me and my wife are all good. I love you, buddy. Buddy, love you. I love everybody. All right. Some stars are dishing on some hot button issues in their marriages. I should have connected it to. I thought that's No, this. maybe it was just in my head. Starting with Gwen Stefani. Let's get after it, okay? Gwen is on the cover of Nylon Magazine and said she has times where she feels insecure about herself and even in her marriage with Blake Shelton. But she assumed the magazine, or she assured the magazine, life is all good at home. Well, Anyone feel insecure in their marriage? I just know the I, yeah, Please do. You know, I um, have always been and, you know, my husband and I have are, have a great relationship. We have a great marriage. But I tell you, the past year and a half, especially going through like fertility issues, it changes. It's like it's a season. So I've had insecurities that I've never had before because I'm hormonally imbalanced. <laughs> 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 really, like where I'm like, where are you going? Yeah. Wait, who are you going? Wait. With? <laughs> Who's she? <laughs> What's going on over there? And he's like, oh, I, you, you know this person. What is happening? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Just I, don't leave me. You is, can't leave me now. That is real. It's, it's That's be real. Said, yeah. For the safety of our male viewers at home, your wife can say that she's hormonally imbalanced. You cannot. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I'm exactly. just letting Thank everybody you, know. Al. Yeah. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Al. But it is. Add, it's a real it's thing. A, very yeah. real thing. <laughs> yes. Very real thing. I was like, why do I care? I care. I really care. Oh my! And I see it too me. sometimes in other women that maybe just give birth or are going through things, and I'm yeah. like, oh, oh, she just gave birth. Like, yeah. you better back off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, let her go through her thing. Actor Oliver Hudson revealed he cheated on his wife after they got engaged. On his podcast, Oliver said he was unfaithful to his wife before they got married back in 2006. Let's have a listen. When I got engaged something happened psychologically and I spiraled and Mm -hmm. I was unfaithful and I was cheating and I was crazy. I never got caught. I told her everything because I couldn't Uh, live with myself and, you know, get married and be married and have children with this sort of weight. You agree with Magnum P.I.L.? Uh, yeah. (laughs) Tori, your take? Do you want to pass? Yeah, I, I, I can. Uh, I want to hear from you. I just don't. I don't know if, if could, you got past that. I don't know if you need to burden your partner with that. If you're not going to repeat the behavior. I don't want to live a lie. I don't want to be living a lie. It's just more important for me to for all the cards to be on the table. I don't need there to be secrets and nooks and crannies of that amount. I would rather know and have the uh, agency and also the respect that that person gives me to make my decision. But man, I would be way more heartbroken to learn 10 years down the line, hey, I never told you this is what, 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 what do you? How do you react if Brooks does the exact same thing to you, tells you after the engagement he cheated, he's over it? How do you, can you move forward? That's why it has, it's so hard. I don't know, but you know what? I would rather that karmic seed of me and Brooks, I'd rather have that truth be known than living a false marriage. That would mm-hmm. burn me up inside. How about every time you forgot to do something like take out the trash? Like, remember when you slept with oh that woman God. in 1995? No, because if I forgive, you gotta let go. You gotta move on and not bring it up every time. That's the work that, you gotta yes, get. That that's, that's a, a big lot ask. of work, but it's, that's the kind of work ass. you gotta do. It's easier said than done. Yes. I think the biggest thing in his account and, you know, Get, I am sure his testimony will help a lot of people. But this was like a pattern, and it seemed like it was reckless. Yeah. And that's where spiral comes. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, I could almost see, and not, that, and not that this is something I'm inviting into my life, but I could almost see, like, I, I you know, was having uh, issues or blah, 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 whatever. Something happened one night. But you went out and w- did this over and over and over again because you were going through an episode. Like, that just feels feels a lot different than I like messed up. It seems very intentional. Mm-hmm, yeah. Either way. 
I, it's not good. I, I'm going to go the other way. Like, say it was reverse, and my wife... Keep it to yourself. Really? Yeah, yeah. Ignorance you wouldn't want to. I'm kind of no. that way too. No, I don't want to. I know. can't live. That's like do li your thing. It's like living, walking every day with a pebble in the shoe. That's just a lie. That no, it's rubs not. You don't know that pebble's there. Yeah. yeah, but I, I don't. This is from 2006. <laughs> you're bringing up, you're, I, un, you're pulling up dead bodies. All right. Yeah. Wanna. Also, yeah, I think when you wait this long and then you divulge the truth, and it's like, what? what else do they have children? Yeah, you're. No, right. I would rather know then than these things. Right. I'd rather know then. To unburden yourself, which is equally as selfish as what you actually. Did. Yeah, yeah, give me your nah, true nah. self so I can have the choice to walk away from you. Uh, I don't want to lie. No, that's good. I, I'm the opposite. Yeah. So, love, if you did something dirty, keep it to yourself. <laughs> All right. Carson Daly says his long-standing <laughs> sleep divorce is helping his marriage. So, Carson has been married since 2015 and says he and his wife sleep in separate bedrooms a few times a week for the past five years. He says it's been good for them both, and they both secretly love it. I don't it's not a secret now. Yeah, why two to three times a week? Because I'm going to tell you what. Okay. I'm with Carson on this why? one. And we do do it a couple of times a week because the kids got to go to school. I got to get up early. Oh, We're kind of jumping around oh, bedrooms. Okay. And on the weekends, everyone just do whatever. Stay up late. We'll sleep here. I'll sleep okay. there. You sleep yeah. with me. That makes sense. And uh, I'm telling you, people think there is a bad marriage. And I started to show off with saying <laughs> there was marital problems. There really isn't. But a couple of times a week, you need to get some good sleep. And yeah. with sure. a five and a seven year old running all over the house at that. all hours of the night, you gotta like just get some sleep. I yeah. feel that. I get that. I just really like being codependent, so I like having Brooksy there, but I don't have kids, so now I totally see. We are like complete yeah. opposites on everything. I know. <laughs> I'm not codependent, but I do have a hard time sleeping without Anthony next to me, and he snores like a train is coming through the house. I know it. He and told I me. Still, I still sleep better when, when he's, he's there, there than yeah. if he, and yeah. It's, do you guys it's hold awesome. hands before you sleep? We do. That's yeah. gross. I, I, it's just, that's, <laughs> that's hard for me. I, that's hard for me, Erica. Just, I don't know. It's so, like, I, when I was living, we were just talking about this, that I stopped. There was this thing that I did that he would catch me doing where I'd like go to sleep and I would be rubbing my, uh, my cheek against my shoulder and I guess I was self-soothing like that's oh. how I would fall asleep so when I was like living alone that's what I would do and oh. then eventually I stopped doing it because he was next to me but we hold <laughs> Wow. Yeah. It's not that weird. I don't know if you can have this conversation wow. without understanding the level of snoring. I had a friend stay with me two weeks ago, and we oh, could snored? hear him snoring. We sleep in the basement. We could hear him snoring through the floor. Shut down. Up. So it's like, this is a very unique situation to every couple, and yeah. don't try and judge any couple because sometimes the snoring yeah. is trained yeah. in the house. Yeah, <laughs> and, and really get checked for apnea. My dad had the snoring, and he was falling asleep, waking up every once every minute. Oh he was God. never oh, hitting I see, I couldn't. Never. I couldn't. Oh. I wake up like if he was like, my kid just opens the door like that, I'm up. I'm like, what's Wait, up, buddy? Like right. sleeper. And plus, my wife, she always yells at me, and she's like, I cannot stand. Every time you lay down, I'm sleeping. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> ba -na 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 -na. The curb your enthusiasm. She's like, I can't hear that song one more time. <laughs> Larry, <laughs> we just watched the finale. Last oh night. yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was, it was good. good. It was cute. It was good. I yeah, thought it was yeah, good. Yeah. All right, so finally, Sunny Hostin, right from yes. the View, says she hides expensive purchases from her husband often. She said she lies if her husband she lies if her husband asks her something. If that is new, she says she takes her shoes out of the box, sneaks them upstairs, and doesn't tell her husband about anything. She doesn't feel guilty about the purchase, but the judgment from her husband. Yeah, I can't do this because we do all of our finances together and with like, we have like a whole system. So it actually shows this is what was purchased for the month. Does he go itemize everything? No, it's just that like our, our his, the finances are very organized. Yeah. So there's no way to really hide anything. I'd rather it just have, comes out later. Anthony wouldn't care. I would rather yeah. have an organ, I'd rather organize financial. Do you ever sneak something would under the never, radar? Never, never. To be honest, Brooks has better taste than I. So I always check with him because he and my mother had oh, the yeah. best taste ever. Well, I forgot you would admit to having sex. Brooks, I bought a yogurt parfait. <laughs> <laughs> I had to tell you, I put it on the credit card. I had to do it. All right, that's that. Yeah. Coming up on DVL, Patrick Swayze's widow is getting candid about life after losing Patrick and the message she got from him in a dream. Very ghost-like, right? And a first look at the Joker sequel with Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga. That's coming up next. Oh, it is?
Welcome back. We are getting a first look at the new Joker movie starring it. Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga, who plays Harley Quinn. Let's take a quick look. What the good. The movie looks like a musical, right? Then in a little bit. And some people have compared it to movies like La La Land. It looked exactly like that. And Moulin Rouge. But director Todd Phillips says it is not a musical, but music will be, quote, an essential element of the movie. Okay, that's... So it's a musical. Right, it is. They don't want to call it a musical because Mean Girls came out as a musical and people were, like, really upset. And I, they turns, didn't call it a musical either. I know. But it people, turns me off a little it bit. It does, and it turns people off. So they don't want to yeah. advertise it that way with something that dark with the audience of a musical theater back Background. They don't always mix. But what I'm hearing from Jennifer, our researcher, who's also a movie cinephile, as am I, is that it's going to be a lot of covers. So like You can read mine. <laughs> <laughs> cinephile. Uh, like 15 covers, which I think is interesting when you take a pastiche like Baz Luhrmann did in Moulin Rouge. Remember, he did Nirvana. He's like, it was stupid, entertaining. Oh, he does that in all of his movies. And I all like that, yeah. right? Right. Like he yeah, did yeah. Madonna mm -hmm. like I, I, and Roxanne. I do like that. I like that right. mix of the pastiche of a rock and roll song mixed with something psychological in a movie. Todd Phillips, I think, could do this well. I think this could be a big hit. Gaga is a perfect Harlequin. I know she and Margot Robbie will be up against each other. I think we have a side-by-side -side here. People remember Harlequin qu clearly as Margot Robbie. Gaga has a lot to live and up And she there. did reply to this, and she's giving her blessing to Lady Gaga. Because a lot of people are asking, why isn't she recurring in Excellent. this role? I think Gaga will be great. Her blessing. I think... Uh, Margot Robbie, someone like you want to be for Halloween, and Lady Gaga is going to be very Scary. much more artistic. I agree with right. you. I, and I, singing wise. I'm yeah. excited about this, and it's so interesting that they, they do have to divorce uh, the word musical for from sure. this. For sure. Whereas you think about a movie like Goodfellas. And all the songs that are playing are of that era. And, you know, even when, like, when they're walking in the first time and they go through the back of the restaurant, the, the music that's playing is almost showing her entering this new world, this underground world, and also falling in love. Like, the songs that play the source music are in very so important. necessary. Yes. So I, it seems like just from these clips, you're looking at these, these two people uh, dancing and descending into madness. And so these songs are supposed to represent what you're seeing in on screen. So I'm super excited yeah. about it. I don't care what you call it. It's, it looks artistic and given this interesting backstory to this character that used to just be the Joker. Like, I can't wait. No opinion. I, this is, are you gonna watch it? Just give seen, it to us. I've never seen any of these movies. Yeah. Yes. It, I I don't watch anything. She doesn't that's like this like, graphic or harsh. Yeah. I don't like violence mm -hmm. and stuff. I. You I should just, not watch this. Yeah. <laughs> I like movies like this. Yeah. I, I will not let you watch this. Thank you. You're welcome. I do. I think Joaquin Phoenix is a fantastic <laughs> actor. He's amazing. Because he's a little he, mad. I, There's madness. There. I'm telling you, you're exactly right. I think to be a, I think anyone can act. I'm being honest with you. When you're great, yeah. you got to be a little bit out there. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. That's like why you're that. so good, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if it puts me in the Joker and I'm out of here, it's all good. <laughs> Coming up on DBL, Patrick Swayze's widow is opening up about life after losing him. That's next.
I'm getting all uh, Joaquin Phoenix on us over here, huh? He's a <laughs> mad artist. <laughs> all nice. right, welcome back. Patrick, Swayze, Patrick Swayze's widow, Lisa, says Patrick appeared in one of her dreams. That's beautiful. Lisa and Patrick were married for 34 years before he passed away. Really? They were married yeah. for 34 yes. years? Bal yes. He died of pancreatic cancer in 2009, if you oh. remember. While on the Amy and TJ podcast, she said she had a dream about Patrick after her current husband proposed to her. Let's listen. First of all, I was elated. He's back, he's back, he's back. I can't marry Albert now because you're back. And he just looked at me and I, and what his words came to me were, he says, no, I know you love me. He says, it has nothing to do with it. He was letting me know it didn't change how we felt about each other. And uh, it was like giving a blessing. That is a visitation. So Lisa also said that it sounded like a scene from the movie Ghost, yeah. like I said at the top, where Patrick's character returns as a spirit to warn his wife that she's in danger. That's in the movie, not in her dream. Yeah. Mary, you in danger. Molly, Molly, oh, I Mary. Molly. I watched, Molly. there was a black version. You in trouble, girl. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's a visitation. That's a visitation. Al, first of all, Al said that during the meeting, which is perfectly fine, and then Tori repeated it with Al's accent, which wasn't great. Goldberg's <laughs> <laughs> accent is Molly. You Mo in danger. Girl. You in danger, girl. That's a great repeating, line. Repeating it's not great. It's a great line. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Can, can I say something that will be wildly unpopular? It just seems like when people are Al, visited, don't. I'm. It seems like when people are visited Ow. from, I'm not, I'm not. I'm just saying, when people, Erica, don't make that don't face. Ow. It, okay. <laughs> just say it. No, what? I can't. I'm getting two <laughs> puppy dog eyes from both sides Ow. and I can't look. Don't do it, girl. I won't. <laughs> You in danger, boy. You in danger, yeah, yeah. I messed it up. I messed it up. No, no one to fold them. That's you. That was good. That was good. I think when you, especially when you're, there's a clarity and there's a connection or a path. Like I actually had an encounter with a friend in a dream that like really put me at peace in like a very like significant way it so it's just it, when you're in sometimes and this is a big time for alignment right now yeah especially a huge clip. time look if you get a second some people don't dream of their loved ones that have passed if you get a second sometimes I see my mom in the background of my dream mm. and she's wearing like bright yellow and I'll just walk past I'll be like oh, she was there and even that is peaceful. So to see him come through, in my mind, is a visitation letting her know, even if it's her subconscious creating the id of all the synapses of her axioms of nerves coming together, that's enough for me, man. That's yeah. enough for me. No, it's important. I think sometimes you ask for things or they're in your mind and you're kind of like on the verge. I remember I had a very important decision to make and a friend of mine who passed away a few years ago she came and on under no uncertain terms was she and she told me this is not the move do not yeah do it. she like, can it's a guide yeah they're guides on your journey like a video game yeah, yeah. and I, I, it's beautiful because i know you know everyone knows what you even the video through. game part <laughs> <laughs> no but it's uh it, it is because when people like question your religion or spirituality whatever it is whatever you believe in if it helps you along yeah. the way you yeah. feel like that's a sign right. from something else and someone else knocks it like that's not true it's like let why me, can you why let, it, why, just be happy yeah, if it helps you along your how journey is it hurting you right how is it hurting you to make me feel like she's there right she's there i just want to see her even a glimpse and i'm better just give me a glimpse oh man seems it's great you did, al i didn't <laughs> even cry say anything. Anything. I, i'm glad i didn't say anything <laughs> <laughs> all right we're all crying out. we'll be right back <laughs>
Welcome back. Would you trust AI to diagnose you? In a recent study, medical professionals found that the advice of artificial intelligence can be more compassionate and more detailed than human doctors. Mm. So would you let AI diagnose you? I think I would need a, a, a hodgepodge, a, a, a a coming together of, of both. Emerging. Both mm -hmm. worlds. Merging acquisitions. Artificial. There have been studies that show when you have a mammogram, for instance, AI can predict certain or find certain tumors before humans can, which is exciting. But I would also not feel comfortable letting a robot take over my health care. I'd want to speak person to person. Right. Use yeah. face. For the doctors, use that as a tool. That's exactly right. It's right. just like a scalpel. Or a tool. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You really just want to get scalpel in there. I just, I think just having a human connection, especially for people of a certain age, is paramount. Like, I still want somebody to look at me and just tell me what's going on, rather than just reading out a printout. And uh, mm. that's not for me, but maybe in 100 years, that's the only way they'll do it. Yeah. Like diagnosing yourself online. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. a good option. Star Trek. Not a good option. <laughs> if, you prefer, if you prefer human. You prefer? prefer? <laughs> if you like human interaction when it comes to your medical needs. Better benefits can help. Many Americans already on Medicare may not have a plan with all the benefits accessible to them. So reach out to Medicare Advantage Advisors today. The benefit review is free. Just call 800-909-2613. And before we go, Lenny Kravitz is the coolest guy ever, even when he's in the gym. Check this out. He posted no, this video. No, he's not. He's no. hot. He's sweating. Whoa, that's a... No, Lenny. First no. of all, those aren't 35 pound plates, Michael Dean. I, He's faking the funk on and that. And look at the I'm funk sure in his pants. Is, but I can't with the pants, Lenny. Yeah, that's no. not 100. Usually that's 135 pounds. There's no, no way There's that's 135 no pounds. No. But the whole point of the story is he's wearing leather jeans and his yeah, mesh skirt. No. I will, I will no. say this the way that the spotter takes it from him, Jeff, I will say that it must really? have been pretty heavy. I Maybe know the way. In on it. There's no way that's 135 but, pounds. But he looks good. He's 59. Good for you, Lenny. Pants. Wear mesh. <laughs> <laughs>